Hello, my loyal subjects, and welcome! Today we're going to be talking about the Ocean Modifier and the awesomeness contained within. So, if you're not aware of the Ocean Modifier, the Ocean Modifier pretty much generates some very nice FFT Ocean. Uh, it's based on the FFT algorithm. It's really gorgeous looking. This is one of those just professional grade things that Blender has, and it's really awesome. Uh, this is incredible if you want to make some boat scenes. And, uh, yeah, it's the Ocean Modifier. Uh, I'm going to be covering how to actually add the modifier, what it sort of does, and also how to get it to animate. Now, not just animate, but animate properly, because that's the scarce information. People will tell you how to make it move, but they won't tell you how to get it to actually, like, map time onto your frames and actually look correct, so correct-ish. So anyway, yeah... Is basically, I'm also going to be covering how to do easing in the animation editor because easing is required for this. Anyway, yeah, let's dive right in. I'm going to hit Control N just to restart from a blank slate, and let's drop down a plane. It doesn't matter what you add, it's going to be replaced. Um, so, let's add a modifier. This is a little ocean modifier. I'm going to hit the O key because that's what's underscored, and therefore that's what I can hit to add the ocean modifier you'll notice this gigantic ocean appears. And you'll also notice that uh, it's a grid, it's a relatively low resolution, and you'll have a small wall of options. One of them is resolution. Careful. This one can really kill your machine quickly. In my case, I'm just going to say 12. Still not very detailed, but uh, we also want larger waves. This is currently very small, fine waves. I'm also going to disable ambient occlusion because it's having some having some issues with this. So under waves, you're gonna see choppiness, and one of the main things you wanna worry about is scale. This is basically how big the waves are. This is probably what you actually want to be messing with. So as you can see, it also handles, like, creates this really weird distortion. But, I mean, you can have fun with this. There's a lot of fun to be had with this. In my case, I'm just gonna set it to three, so we have some nice large waves. Can't really switch my mat cap. But, again, this is a really nice little wave, and the thing is, we want to be able to animate it. There's this little property in here called Time, and if I drag this, you'll see it gets animated. And this is how we are supposed to animate our ocean. There are a bunch of other properties, depth, and so on. A lot of these don't seem to do much, I'm going to warn you. Uh, normals will allow you to... Uh, generate normals will basically make each one of these polygons slightly more expensive, but will also allow you to do things like displace, uh, displacement mapping and whatnot. It makes it a little bit better, uh, but it's honestly not going to be that visible. Uh, again, it's all sort of the complicated stuff. Really what I want to talk about is just how to actually handle this. And uh, the advanced options can wait till later. So what is time? What does this property actually mean? Well, it's how many seconds... Uh, across your ocean goes. So for example, you can see the waves are rolling and cascading and everything. Well, the idea is that you've got one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, etc. So what this is actually supposed to indicate is how many seconds, you know, what second in time it is. So one of the cool features of Blender that a lot of people strangely don't know about is that you can keyframe anything in Blender. You just mouse over the property, and you hit the I key. Same as you would add a keyframe to a skeleton or something, you just hit the I key while moused over something, and that keyframes it. I'm going to set this to zero, and I'm going to hit I over it. And you'll notice a little keyframe shows up. So for example, and if you'll notice if I move uh, my little where I am in the timeline, and for example, if I went to frame 48, which is about two seconds in, You'll notice it's green. This is saying, hey, we're not currently keyframed, but there's something animated in this slot. This is designed to indicate, so if I change my time, and then I change what frame I'm on, I'm going to lose that information, because, of course, it's animated. It has a value that it needs to be at. So we're at two seconds in, I'm going to set it to two, and then I'm going to keyframe it there by just hitting I. And that's all that's required to animate it. But, if I now play this animation, you're going to notice something really weird happen. Well, first of all, it's not going to play anything because my timeline doesn't have a length. Smooth. 
but you'll notice a weird time thing where it starts really slow and then speeds up and then slows down again? What the hell is that? Well, the simple answer is easing. Easing is an animation style thing that Blender has that basically means it'll slow down and speed up when moving in and out of a certain motion. That's It creates very smooth motion and uh, avoids it being super robotic, but the problem is it doesn't make any sense when animating something like this, like time. It really doesn't, because time is linear. It's a straight line. It starts and it stays going at the same rate. You know, it doesn't make any sense to do easing on it. So we need to animate some easing in. Now, another thing I want to cover, uh, just a little quick tip, is the different views. So up here in the top left, you're going to see a little drop down. Uh, you can click on this little top left corner, and there's a little drop down of a bunch of views you can do. And we can go to the animation view, we can go back to our 3D view, we can go uh, all kinds of different things. Default, or uh, anyway, it's all these. But you can also, if you want to know the shortcut, hold down control and hit the left and right arrow keys to tab between them. This is how I go to my uh, compositing view, which is great for compositing images. You render in the bottom right, uh, you have your rendered image in the bottom left, and you have all your nodes across the top. If you hit control left again, you'll get to the animation view. And this is where we're starting to get somewhere. You see, now, what we have is we have a little dope sheet which shows us that we have two keyframes. We have the one where our time was set to two, and we have one where our time was set to zero. However, you'll notice the easing curve here. If I select this, you'll see it starts off and uh, you can see the time value speeding up and slowing down again. You can see the curve that it's taking. So how do we get rid of this? Do we, you know, try to animate and grab these handles? Because notice these are Bezier curves. Well, no, you can select them, hit the T key, and this will bring up your keyframe interpolation. There are a couple... Uh, you can also go under key, I think, and interpolation mode. And we just want to set it to linear. This means it'll move in a straight line from point A to point B, never speeding up or slowing down, just moving towards a destination at a fixed speed. This is actually what we want, so you just set it to linear. So to break it down, um, uh, to break it down, we the idea is that we want to animate time in a straight line. One second is one second. Um, anyway, so. Just select your keyframes, hit T, linear. You can set up a few different modes as well. There's all kinds of interesting ones like bounce. That would probably look weird because time would then start reversing and then playing back again. That one's meant more for like if you drop something on the ground and you want to animate it, it'll actually bounce up and down a few times. Um, there's back, which actually overshoots the time somewhat and then, or uh, the value somewhat and then rolls back a bit, which is kind of useful for many cartoony animations. These are the kind of things that give you Pixar-esque animation, and of course elastic, which is very springy. It's more like a rubber band. In our case though, we just want linear. And now if we hit Alt-A, you can see we get a nice rolling ocean. Beautiful. Anyway. You can keep cranking up this resolution, you can even repeat it. It seamlessly repeats. Um, we're gonna warn you, patterns will start to show up really quickly if you start doing that a lot, so be careful. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool little tool that you can use to make some really awesome backgrounds. And uh, yeah, and play around with it and be creative. Remember you can scale these, and now we've got a neat little mountain range, don't we? So, yeah. If I disable backface culling, we can create some, I don't know, mushroom clouds. Like a little cloud bed or something. I don't know. Play with it. Have fun. Do cool shit. And, uh, yeah. Have a wonderful day. And if you create anything interesting, link it in the description because I want to see some cool stuff that you guys make. So, yeah. Peace out.